our tutorial Augmented DK Fuller Test. First order trend stationary time series consists of random processes that have constant mean which don't exhibit trend pattern. This topic is part of purse trading analysis with our curse. Feel free to take a look at curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Augmented DK Fuller test consists of evaluating whether time series was first order trend stationary with no hypothesis that it had a unit root and was not stationary. For full reference, I recommend that you read David DK and Wayne Fuller, Distribution of the Estimators for Autoregressive Time Series with a Unit Root, published in the Journal of the American Statistical Association in 1979. As a formula, we have that current period data difference is equal to a constant plus a beta coefficient multiplied by a trend variable. This trend variable is a sequence from 1 all the way into the number of observations, plus a gamma coefficient multiplied by previous periods data, plus and here we have the sum from the first to that p number of lags included within augmented DK Fuller test of delta coefficients multiplied by previous periods data difference, plus this regression forecasting errors or residuals. And regarding augmented DK Fuller test, we have the following options. First, C equals to zero and beta equals to zero, therefore augmented DK Fuller test without a constant and without a trend variable. Second option, C different to zero and beta equals to zero, therefore augmented DK Fuller test with a constant but without a trend variable. And then we have C different to zero and beta different to zero, therefore augmented DK Fuller test with a constant and with a trend variable. And then we have individual tests for gamma coefficient t statistic approximated p-value. If gamma coefficient t statistic approximated p-value was less than of a percentage level of statistical significance, then time series was first order trend stationary with 1 minus of a percentage level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if gamma coefficient t statistic approximated p-value was greater than of a percentage level of statistical significance, then higher differentiation order needed for first order trend stationary time series with 1 minus of a percentage level of statistical confidence. Notice that we can also perform a joint test of the constant beta and gamma coefficients through f statistic approximated p-value if they were included within augmented DK Fuller test. Great. So let's go back into our studio so that we can study augmented DK Fuller test with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within our studio. In this tutorial, we'll be working within our tutorial augmented DK Fuller test code file. So the first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. So we do so with library function and within it the package name. For this tutorial, we'll be using QuantMod and T series. So we select those two code lines, then we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. The following step is to create data for augmented DK Fuller test, and this is done through data reading. So we create this object named data, which is equal to read.csv, and within it we have the name of the data file, augmented DK Fuller test data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separate values stored within the working directory, comma header equals to true. So we select that code line, then click run or control enter on the keyboard, and notice that this creates a data object as a data frame within this global environment. So we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon and it opens the data for us. We have two columns of data. First of this, dates with a daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 10 years of data. And then we have EWG adjusted. EWG corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the MSCI Germany country index and adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. So back into the code file, what we're going to do next is we're going to convert that data frame into an XTS, which stands for extensible time series. So we overwrite data as an XTS and from data, we select the second column with those adjusted close prices, comma order by equals as date with capital D, data the first one with those dates. And we're going to rename the column names of data with GER for those German prices. So we select the two code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard, 
and notice that it now became an XTS or extensible time series and if we open the data we see that now the dates became the index. So back into the code file, the following step is we're going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range, commonly used for purse identification and purse spread co-integration evaluation, and testing range, commonly used for purse trading strategies calculation and their performance evaluation. Notice that this training and testing ranges delimiting was only included as an example for educational purposes, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So we create this object named tData, t for train range, and it's going to be data from the beginning of the time series all the way to the end of 2014, therefore the first eight years of data. And then we create f data, f for testing range, and it's going to be data from the beginning of 2015 all the way to the end of 2016, therefore the last two years of data. So we select the two code lines, click run or control on the keyboard, and we create the two objects, and in this tutorial we'll only be working within the train range. So the following step is to visualize prices within their corresponding chart. So we create this new object, which is going to be named TGR for German prices within the train range equals to TData. We're going to plot those German prices within the train range with their corresponding title. So we select the two code lines here and we click run or control enter on the keyboard. So now we can see the chart here within the corresponding area. So we're going to zoom into it. And we see those German prices within the train range prices chart. On the vertical axis, we have the adjusted close prices on the horizontal one dates from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2014, therefore the first eight years of data or the training range. So we close the chart there and the following step is to do the prices at Menta DK Fuller test. We're using this function ADF test dot test and we're using German prices within the train range with the alternative which is stationary and k equals to 1 that's the number of lags included within augmented DK Fuller test. Notice that this alternative parameter and number of lags were only included as an educational example therefore they are not fixed and they can be modified according to your needs. So we select this code line here and click run or control enter on the keyboard and notice that within the console augmented DK Fuller test results were printed. The data, German price within the train range, DK Fuller test statistic, number of lags included here within the corresponding parameters of the function, as well as stationary as alternative hypothesis, and then we have the p-value. This augmented DK Fuller test was done including a constant and also including a trend, and the p-value is the one corresponding to that individual test described within the slides. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying augmented DK Fuller test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.